Welcome to Black People Love Paramore, a podcast to try to help Black people feel seen. Please feel free to donate to the show at the link in the show notes. And please rate us and write us a review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Five stars only because we are five star bitches. We're Dio Gotti. If you are watching this on YouTube, please like, comment, subscribe, and all of the things. I'm your host, Sequoia. And today, joining me as we briefly dip back into the TV show land, we have comedian, actress and the scam goddess herself Lacey Mosley Lacey I'm so excited to have you quickly I'm so excited to be here you know I had an epic journey to get here child I'm, I know wait. you went through it today you've been going through it all day the but devil was good. really against me mm -hmm. you don't look like what you've been through hair looks yeah. good and, and that's, that's a, a message that yeah. is, <laughs> when, when a black person says you look like what you've been through oh that's not good that's not, that's not good, good. You don't want to look like what you've been through. You I got don't. my WGA t-shirt on, like, mm -hmm. you know, support the gang. Strike Fight going on strong. Yep. Yeah. Gang, gang. Cool. <laughs> okay. Lacey, do you want to tell them a little bit about yourself? Do you have anything that you would like to, to share with them? Don't worry if you do not. Oh, I mean, share. I mean, I, I do a podcast called Scam Goddess. I love doing other people's podcasts, especially because this was like Black people at Paramore. I was like, wait, wait, Paramore, Black people? Like, yes, my vibes. <laughs> so you don't even know how, uh, babes, we're going to get into it. But um, yeah, and I'm an actor. If you're, if you're live right now, stream my Carly. It's fun on Paramount Plus or watch The Outlaws July 7th on Netflix that comes out. Uh, or watch The Lopez Show on Peacock. Watch some, put some of me in your eyeballs so I can Come continue on. to get checks. Come on. <laughs> All of the projects. I didn't know that you had The Outlaws coming out. I didn't know that that, that, that was a thing. Very cool. Yeah. I'm very excited okay. about it. They low key scammed me because I, I flew out to shoot it while I was shooting at Carly. And then they were like, hey, we actually need you to come back to shoot another scene that we added. And then they like did this whole thing where they were talking to my studio reps and everything, trying to get me back out there. All this, right? I fly yeah. out on a red eye after shooting, have to go from Ooh. the plane to set. So it's 5 a.m. Mm -hmm. and I'm straight to work, right? Off the plane. And so I got that good plane sleep. Uh, mm. <laughs> right? <laughs> that great plane sleep. That great, you know that great plane sleep next mm. to a baby. Mm. <laughs> my favorite. <laughs> Like, the most quiet no baby. baby in the world, always. Actually, sometimes I get a good baby, and I really will, like. I will say, like, man, you got a great baby. Like, I was, I'll turn around and be like, you got a great baby there. That's a good baby. Wow. I sometimes they be chill. I never got a good baby, not once. So I've gotten lucky. They be cooling. They be chilling. And I'm like, and even if they were crying, I feel for parents, and so I'm not gonna make it I a do thing. Too. Yeah. But, right. I would never make it a thing. But yes. Right. Yeah. I might feel internally like, damn. But that's Definitely. all. You know, I'm gonna try I'm gonna to keep help to myself. Out. I'm gonna keep it cute. Right. If anything, I'm gonna be like, you need me to bounce them around. Like, right. we gotta, let's get to the solution. <laughs> A solution oriented, absolutely. Yes. I'm this baby's auntie now, but uh, I'm a plain auntie. But um, no, so I get there, I look at the script, like the sides that they gave me. I had no lines, and I was like, yeah, you're fall joking off for this for for no lines. Uh, and then uh, they were like, no, we just want you to go off, and I was like, what? And they're like, yeah, we just want you to go off, and I was like, all right, bet. Like, so. Okay. It's a it's a very fun movie, yeah. Okay, okay, I'm very excited to see it. So they wanted you to improvise, just like, yeah. Do you? And I have the last line in the movie, and it is improvised from them wow. tricking me to come out there. <laughs> now I have seen Lacey improvise. I saw you on Langston's podcast. My mama told me. Yes, love Langston. The on the uh, the live the live, the live show? episode. Oh, the live child! Show. So you yes. saw me act a fool. Oh my I, goodness! You acted a fool. It was the funniest thing I've ever seen. I was hysterical in my seat, losing my shit. <laughs> oh, thank you. But also, Langston and I have known each other for a while, and he was like, first of all, you are a headliner. Why you come out with all this ang this aggression?" And I was like, <laughs> "I don't thought we was doing a bit, <laughs> right?" I didn't know. Like, why mm. you bring this bell on stage? I was like, I saw it on the walk out. I don't know. I think I did a split I in that show. Good you Lord. did. You did a split and you ate them up. You absolutely ate them up and you did a split. It was great. Wow. An help. experience. <laughs> if you haven't seen Lacey live, you need to. Damn, I wish this was coming out before your your live, live show, show tomorrow, yeah that's tomorrow yeah i know that you have one tomorrow i'm sad that i'm gonna miss it because i have a birthday dinner but okay, birthday on a birthday yeah, yeah yeah not my birthday but somebody else's birthday dinner but damn yeah if she has another one go see it i'm sure you will yeah i think like, i'm gonna do it it's gonna be a thing <laughs> but i'm excited yeah. for it tomorrow's about to be wild as hell uh we texted and i was like okay i know the vibes it's gonna be crazy my mom's gonna be in it it's it's crazy <gasps> 
Your mom's going to be in it. Not about to have to cancel the birthday dinner. Listen, my mom is a Leo and a ham. And when she said she was coming to town, you know, I was like, do you want to be a part of like a little? She's like, oh, absolutely. Okay. So what am I going to wear? Like, I'm literally getting her makeup done. Like she's going to get her I makeup love done. It. Yeah. I love a Leo too. That's like that's yes. that's my fave. I love a Leo. Yes, because Leo is like my mom will brag about me sometimes on Facebook, but it's not like what you like. You, you know, you'd be like, "Oh, my daughter's in this." She'll post and be like, "Oh, watch the show tonight because you might see somebody who looks like me." Like, watch Better Call Saul. <laughs> you gonna see somebody who looks like me? Classic. It's classic. I love it. Main character, big main character. Energy. Main character, huge main character energy. And I stand a Leo for that reason. I wish I had a little yes. bit of Leo on my chart. I don't. But that's neither here nor there. You do? You, of course you do. You character. know, you seem like you would. Of course you do. Yeah. <laughs> little I, Aries, little Leo, little Libra. Yes, I love Oh, you place. got lots of, damn, you have everything that I literally have none of. I don't have, not a, a piece of Libra. No, no Leo. Wait, what's your son? None of that. Gemini. Okay, yes. I like Gemini's, just especially Gemini women. So, yes. The, them the main ones. We don't even claim the men. We got to call them yeah. something else. They're just an issue, but yeah. And I've never seen a Gemini That's girl who wasn't, at least my friends, like, or beat down, like, face, face beat, hair lay. Like, she's cute. She's very cute. You must. Yes. It's a must. How else would I show up? I'm going to pop out. Right. I'll pop out. You know what I mean? Okay. Period. <laughs> I know you know what I mean. Yes. Okay. Before we get to talking about Reba, we have my first segment, In My Defense. In My Defense is where we bring one of our unpopular opinions and defend it for you all. Lacey, yes. I would love to hear what cool, you are yeah. defending this week. Oh, this one's going to make the girls mad. It's going to make them upset. Oh, I love something that makes the girls mad. Yes. They're going to be incensed. Okay. Mm. <laughs> rage. Mm. It's giving yes. rage. Yes. But I do not believe that something is a spoiler after it airs so <laughs> after it airs at all <laughs> like babe let's be so, so serious so like you, there's like, not a time limit you said if it's if it's aired it's not a spoiler if it's aired <laughs> now if you got a leak from somebody at the back line or some shit like okay i understand that but if it's aired babes you're late, honey, sweetie. And you just need okay. to stay off of social media. That's not okay. our problem. We, the world is bad. Shit is bleak. Let me Bad enjoy news. succession real t- time on the timeline, okay? Because think about yeah. this. Think about this. What if somebody was like, oh my God, don't tell me. Like, y'all all on the internet talking about who won the Super Bowl. Why y'all spoiling it? What are you saying? That's fair. That's fair. My kids already got their didn't watch from it. the losing team. Like, what are you saying? We, we... Right. No, yeah. that's very fair because I'm going to Beyonce's uh, tour. In I, as am I in, uh-huh. in my regalia. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Absolutely. We'll be showing up and showing yeah. out. And at first I was like, you know what? I feel like people are doing too much posting this shit on the internet. You know, half of us not seeing this for the next four or five months. Like, why are y'all posting the first few shows on the internet? And then I had to be fucking for real. And I was like, mm-hmm. you know what? This is on you. You either go to the early show, one, two, block Beyonce, everything regarding Beyonce yep. from your timeline, or shut up and suck it up. And so I shut up and suck it up. You know what I mean? And I'm, I'm, I I'm like, I want to see the video so I can learn my steps and my choreography, my choreography. And there's that. Because you know? we have to be learn to be right mute. To be mute when she said be mute because the girlies are not being mute and I don't know what the fuck is wrong with y'all. Mm. Beyonce said everybody on mute and y'all talking. Stop doing that. Stop doing that. So I had to, you know, see what where they went wrong in order to make it right for my show in September. I had time to prepare. But That's I do love Sequoia that you're saying like you took the personal responsibility of like, okay, if I don't want to see this, that because I feel like oh, yeah. so many people want to be like, yeah, everyone should have the common courtesy to you trying to tell the internet what to do. Yeah, you trying to tell Al Gore and Beyonce's internet what to do? Like <laughs> silly. losing battle, a goofy yeah, time. Not win that one. Yep. Yeah, yeah, a silly goofy time. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Okay, my and my defense this week is a little bit different. I can't mm-hmm. remember if I said this on the show before, y'all. I already told y'all I don't have any more unpopular opinions to defend publicly. Things that I'm willing <laughs> to say going forward have to go behind the paywall. But right. I found NBA. one. I dug deep. You know, NDA. You got to sign something because no, I dug deep. I found something for y'all. I might have said this before. I don't remember scooping instead of dipping is insane it's it's a sickness if now, what, you are take we a talking chip, about dip it up pick it up slow or... <laughs> <laughs> what? i was just trying to figure out what kind of is it, i just i dip we dip like i thought we was dancing that's where I went. if you okay. take a potato chip 
mm-hmm. or a tortilla chip and you scoop it in a dip as opposed to simply up and down dipping it we're just not you know what i mean we're just not on the same type of vibe so you it's like to finger the dip with the chip you you like the diddle I'm, i want to i want to finger the dip with the chip like this exactly <laughs> precisely just want just a coating it just needs a light coating y'all be trying to overdo the entire chip overpower the entire chip with a whole not, scoop not go spoiled. get a spoon if you want to drink it go get a spoon i don't agree with you i think i think <laughs> you are scoop shaming and nobody does and that's okay and also like let's think about frito-lay and how they got a whole chip that's called the scoop for scooping purposes oh lord not you sounded like garrick he said the same thing when i with told the him French this onion dip. He's talking about, it's those chips called scoops. And what about it? That's, you know what? That's enabling. They're enabling the y'all to make want. bad decisions. No, it's enabling y'all to make bad decisions. You know, what is what is a sin? Greed? It's a sin. We don't do that yes. around here. Okay? You just dip. Gluttony, you, you mean? you pull it up. <laughs> <laughs> Greed is a sin, but like, I think you mean gluttony. You're talking about you saying we're taking out too much dip. You know exactly what the hell and I meant. Yes. You're saying we being greedy with the dip. Yes. Okay? We are uh-huh. in there, but of dips. Okay? You being, <laughs> you being a glutton. I'm hoarding the dip. The dip. Okay, You're my question the is... Dip. Okay, so I have a question for you then. So, you know, ratios are important. And some people want the ratio to the dip to the chip. They don't want, they don't want just like a little skinny dip in the, in the dip in the chip. You know, they want to get fully in there and get in that thing. And so my question is, because this is making me think, like, if you eat peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, what's your peanut butter and jelly ratio? Because it's giving like, you just having like bread and like a whisper I of. I don't eat that. Topic. But wow, if I did, it definitely would be a whisper of peanut butter, a whisper of jelly. And primarily bread. Even when I make like a lunch meat sandwich, wow. you know, I don't want a lot of lunch meat on there. I want a little I I agree mostly there. bread. Okay, okay, so it's the same vibe. You know but also I mean? the energy you gave when I asked about a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, and she was like, "No, Michelle Obama didn't let us eat that in school. I don't know what kind <laughs> of food you, rat sandwiches you're having." <laughs> they took Uncrustable straight out of my school, so I didn't have that. But I also don't like peanut butter nor jelly, so I have weird food tastes. That's like a running theme on this podcast. People are like, I don't want to hear any more of your food takes because I've had <laughs> enough because you are an issue. So that's it. I decided I would leave you all with one more, just a little dip chip. That wasn't that bad, right? Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll move on to song of the week. I have a song this week. Would love to hear yours, Lacey. Yes. Okay. Wait, tell me yours first because I have to think of okay. the name of my song. I know who it's by. Okay. I'm trying to think of a specific name. Okay, go for it. So, I have been watching The Idol. I don't want to say I love it. Okay, um, that's, that's my shame because I've been looking at mm-hmm. it too. It's I've been so it. bad. Like, it's pretty bad. bad. And they think they're it's smart. Bad. They're like, we're doing a smart thing. And like, how many times can you artfully light one nipple? Like, they are I'm telling you. You got uh, black lights. You got sunlight. You got, like, you're going to see this nipple in every form that a nipple could be seen. It's just they a music video every time. It's fine. Okay, we got it. The pink nipples exist. Thank you. Yes. I, under boob I carrying the show. It's under boob and nipple. Uh, you know, it's doing a lot of the. Oh, so you know what drives me crazy on a fucking idol is that anytime they have the little sex scenes where the weekend is like a part of it, and he's like eating her out or something. He's so comically <laughs> far away from where would vagina would be that I'm like, what? Yes. What are we doing? Like Skinamax did better yes. than this. Like I'm wow, a child of Skinamax. We right, I can put on some bags. You, you got to right. do better than this. <laughs> yeah, Ooh. it's all, it's all a little mm, not it's great. Also just bad men, like I want to be abused, and I I want to be so sexualized. Like it's just it's so weird and bad. Like Sam loves it's it bad. to be ashamed. But anyways, I'm ahead. telling you, I think I know what you want to say for your song, though. <laughs> you do. You know what I'm about to say for my song, and that little rat tail is really oh pissing me off. God. His whole wig is pissing me off. Honestly. You know what makes me mad about that rat tail is that it's not even a fucking rat tail. Like a rat tail is supposed to just be like you don't have no hair, and then you have a little yes. tail. It's literally right. his thin ass. Like he got two just so for me terms. He got what is going on? Me. He got the just for me, and it left just a little Absolutely. bit of hair, and they put it in the ponytail. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. It's a bad ponytail. That's, it's too much. Mm hmm. It's not good, right? It's no. It's like when you go to like your hairstylist the and they're like, do you want to trim? And you're trying to hold on to that little bit. It's that. You got to let it go. You got to let them dead ends go, baby. Mr. Weekend, mm-hmm. you have to let that go, Abel. 
Yes, but the song yeah. is World Class Center slash oh. I'm a Freak. That's the name of the song. It's, you know I it's, wanna bang. It's so good. I'm like, oh, this is an earworm. When I first heard it, I said, oh, hmm. Well, now that's something I can, you know, that's something I can work with. I went and looked for it on streaming. It wasn't on there, but it just got on there. Yeah. So if you want to hear it, go listen to World Class Center by Miss, uh, what's her name? Lily it's Rose G- Depp. Oh, but I thought Judy from Blackpink sang it. Is it really Lily singing? No, no, no. It's uh, it's the oh. main girl. No, or at least it's credited really? to her on streaming. Yeah. yeah. Maybe the Black King, Pink girly does have like a version. I would imagine. That makes sense. Yeah. I know she's featured on yeah. a lot of stuff. But I I, mm-hmm. I will give it to them. that I'm a freak song. I, I love it. I'm like, you know, I want to bang. Yeah. Who doesn't want to bang? Ooh. Mm. Come on, my spirit. Freak, yeah. It's like yeah. slut pop. Yeah. I love it. I love oh my god, slut pop, slut pop! I love that mm-hmm. term. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. I think I got that from what's her name? Damn, I really want to credit her because I don't want to act like I came up with that on my own. But I can't think of her. Nah, right it's now. too Somebody late. Know it. Scam. You I came know. Up with the Sequoia. Oh, Sequoia. It's attributed Sequoia to me now. Pop. Thank you. She has an entire album called Slut Pop. I don't remember the lady's name right now. But anyways, yeah. moving on. I would love to know your song, Lacey. So... If you did, did you think of the name? Because we both can't think of stuff right now. Okay, it's by Steve Lacey, and it's okay. called Dark Red. It's like, don't okay. you give me a please, I'm in love. Like, it's so sexy, and mm-hmm. um, I just love Steve Lacey. I think he's super beautiful, and also I think I'm super attracted to him because his name is, last name is Lacey, and I'm like, oh, Lacey. like Lacey Lacey? Like, I could be Lacey Lacey? Like, that would Ooh. fulfill my dreams of you know being a main character and yep. i went, i once dated a guy named lacy solely because his name was lacy and i was like let you guys stop dating this man you don't even like him <laughs> you don't even like him right what you name lacy like, though like it's mm-hmm. aesthetic, you know it was giving you know? lacy and lacy you gotta write yeah. it out a little bit sometimes because it was giving sometimes yeah but i was like okay let's be fault. serious be a serious person Sometimes. Okay, I'm gonna have to listen to that one. I the only Steve Lacey song I know is that one that went viral on TikTok. Bad habit. Just that little portion. I mm-hmm. bite my tongue. It's bad. Habit. Bad. Exactly. Oh, I love I'm gonna have him. to get into he, some other stuff. You know, he was in the internet. I love the internet. Like, girl is one of my all time favorite songs. Love Sid. Mm-hmm. You know, Sid is so fun. But like, <laughs> one time someone threw a bra on stage that was like very comically large. <laughs> on at the show yeah and she picked me up she was like is this for me y'all know i ain't got no titties like it was so funny she's so fun but also she y'all put her head in it throwing shit on stages y'all i saw bb record get hit in the head with a phone yesterday oh yeah yeah this is not okay please I, y'all. I know y'all are doing it because you're like oh they're gonna pick the phone up and i'll get a viral moment but like why are we chasing cloud bro if you do if you are a nurse why are you chucking a phone at somebody's head on stage like let's be like, so what for the real fuck is wrong with you right now if bb rexler got off the stage in the crowd and beat your ass then she's wrong but right. you literally chucked the phone at my head it was a no. man and he they took him to jail they took him straight to prison oh. <laughs> then as they should have because you tried to call somebody bodily harm at their fucking show so right. stop you paid for a ticket to chuck your phone in my head? Like, what's going on? Certainly did not. Would never do that. No. Mm-mm. Okay, great song. I'm going to have to listen to it because I know Steve Lacey has a good little voice. Oh, yeah. I enjoy what I've heard thus far, so I'm going to check great it out. Great musician. We can move on to the main topic. Mm. Reba. This is something that you specifically wanted to do, too, because Reba was on my list, but I didn't send you that list, I don't think. Oh no, so, like, I didn't get a list. You just happened to say it. Right. You just happened to say it. And I was like, that's funny because a single that is mom one who of the works too on my hard list. and loves the kids and <laughs> their sons songs. with a gentle hand and a heart of a fighter. I'm a survivor. I hit that hard. Now, that's the only time you can hit the hard yeah, R. Of I'm course. A survivor. Oh. She always hits the hard R. I don't want to know nothing about her. I don't want to know nothing about her. Right. I, I do not <laughs> her joking. milkshake duck. I don't want to know she votes for Trump three times a year, whatever she can. I don't want to know. Me neither. Me neither. And she really don't be trying to tell us either, which I appreciate. If You know, keep it to yourself, baby. Be quiet. Right. Be, quiet. be quiet. We just want to enjoy the, we just want to enjoy Reba. Don't ruin we just want to have a good time us, okay? Reba. Please. Okay. So for those of y'all who don't know what Reba is, 
Reba is an American television sitcom starring country music singer Reba McIntyre that aired from October 5th, 2001 to February 18th, 2007. The series originally premiered on the WB, where it aired for five seasons, with the sixth season airing on the CW. Most episodes were filmed in front of a live studio audience, like many shows at the time. That was a good time yeah. in television. Lacey, in your own words, can you describe the premise of Reba for us? Okay, so... It's so funny that you say it was on the WB because now it started to make me realize why black people were seeing it because it was on the WB. It was on Warner Brothers. Exactly. You see the cops? Exactly. Warner Brothers. It was on Brothers. our network. Yeah. Brothers. But, okay, so <laughs> Reba is about a redheaded white lady who is very tenacious and she divorces her husband, Brock, who ain't shit. And, um, mm -hmm. He gets a new wife. I forget her name, but she was like the cute one with the blonde hair who was funny. And but the new wife get on her nerves. Reba can't escape Brock, her husband. She can't escape his bullshit. He always at the house. He always there with his new wife. He is a man child that will not give up. It's like we got divorced, sis. Why are you in my house all the time? Then she has her kids. You know she got Cheyenne, who like she's cute, but she a fuck up. And then you know she got her little boo, and her boo is dumb mm -hmm. too. And then they gonna have a baby. Mm -hmm. And then now Reba got a mm -hmm. new baby, and it's like Reba's like I'm. I honestly think the plot of Reba was really her trying to be like, how do I get all these motherfuckers out of my house? How do I get them out of my house? And everybody was that like, Mom, Reba, it. it's very cozy in here, and we will all be joining. <laughs> Right, we'll be here. No, no, no. Girl. She's like, please don't. No, yeah, you're not gonna go groceries. We'll be on the couch when you get back. Like, don't worry, mm -mm. we're never leaving. She's like, please don't. So the, get the fuck. Really, Reba is about a hardworking middle America white woman who can't get rid of anybody out of her house. <laughs> like, Damn. They, Damn, a nightmare. They pulling up. They having kids. They not leaving. Mm. Mm. Ugh. She's a gracious. Hate queen. that for her. I know. When did you start watching Reba? I think I was probably like, I don't know, 11, 10 or 11. Okay. Um, was it like a Nick at Night type situation or like something like that? I think it was like maybe in the later seasons, but at some point I think it was airing, um, but mm -hmm. maybe in the later seasons. But it was just like, I got enveloped in Reba because she was a survivor. And it was just, <laughs> it's funny. They had good jokes over there. It's just like them, them barefoot country white people that I know because I'm from Texas, and oh, yeah, okay, and, okay, and they were funny and it, it, it was comforting and like Reba, you know, she gives me like she's like TV Xanax. I'm like, Ugh, get put in my veins, like love it. It is kind of relaxing, right? I had never seen an episode before this morning. I watched some episodes of Reba to prepare for this podcast. I watched the first episode of every season. The pilot hooked me immediately. I was like, oh, this is funny. And that's hard to do for a show that came out in 2001 that I'm watching for the first time right. in 2023. I'm like, oh, this is really good. So there's really something to it. And it seems like Black people specifically like it a lot. And I have theories, but we'll get to that later. And I would love to hear yours. Ooh, I would love to hear your theories. I mean, mm -hmm. I just gathered one. But no, it's it's like, I think we all kind of love mashed potato TV. And I don't like that it gets mm. a bad rap. I do a lot of mashed potato TV. Like Lopez is Me in too. front of a live audience. So when I'm on that show, we're in front of a live audience. I Carly oh, you, you do it. Oh. You act in it. Not that you watch it. My bad. We don't we're not doing the same thing. I'm watching it. Lacey's doing it. Okay. I watch okay, it okay. too. <laughs> but to your point, oh damn. I watch it too, but to your point of like a live studio audience, like I've done a laugh track. I probably is a laugh track show. Uh Lopez is a live studio audience. So that was my first multicam with a live studio audience. And the feeling is so electric. Like I did theater my whole life, so it was like kind of going hearkening back to that. Um mm -hmm. but I think comedy in general gets a bad rap. Like, look at the award mm -hmm. shows. It's always for, like, dramatic things and best dramatic actor and whatever. And, like, it's like, okay, yeah. These shows these, or these movies and these shows are super important. But, like, let's think back. How many times are you going to watch 12 Years a Slave versus how many times would you watch Talladega Nights? Like... One of those, yeah. you could be like, hey, girl, come on, we're going we gonna to throw on uh, Talladega Nights. We're going to throw on The Wood. You know, we're going mm -hmm. we to throw on Two Can Play That Game, you know? Yeah. But they're not yep. serious. But it's like, 
okay, mm. why do they have to be serious? Because in terms of consumption, I'm going to watch Reba over and over again before I'm going to watch like some sad ass show about a murder or before I'm going to watch Dahmer over and over again. And I loved Dahmer. I had a friend in Dahmer and that's why I watched it. And I do think it's kind of fucked because mm-hmm. like, you know, we shouldn't glorify serial killers, but my homie was in it. So I was like, mm-hmm. I got to support the homies. But like, right. I'm not going to watch that again. Like, ever. No. No, I'm not watching Chernobyl repeatedly. Yeah, I'm watching Chernobyl repeatedly. Ain't nobody like you get to the function and they like. <laughs> hey y'all, put on roots. Like we, like we. Not, <laughs> hey y'all, throw on that Fruitvale station. Uh uh-uh, uh, you scaring the hoes. You scaring the hoes. You gotta get on. Yeah. No. You scaring you the get on. hoes. Like you need to leave yeah. immediately, and don't forget to go when you leave. <laughs> Because what? Don't forget to go when you leave, too, okay? <laughs> no. Cut the camera. Zed ass. I'm not watching that. So well, I think this, this, we can't be here doing that. Right. So I think there's something that's really beautiful about Reba that it has that uh, component to it where it's like rewatchability. You can fold your laundry to it. You can put it on if you have anxiety. A lot of people with anxiety watch the same show over and over and over again because they know it's going to happen. And so, you know, and maybe you hear a joke that you didn't yes. hear the first time. And there's a lot of jokes in Reba, yes. so... A hundred percent, because the thing about mashed potato TV, as you call it, which I really like that name. I've never heard that before. You don't have to be so glued to the television while you are watching it. So you can rewatch it back and be like, oh, I did miss that joke the first time. This is really funny. It's enjoyable multiple times because maybe you weren't sitting there like absorbing and then you're exhausted Mm -hmm. afterward. Maybe you're feeling energized. Maybe the theme song brings you a little bit of peace, which a lot of theme songs do for me. For like yeah. older older shows like Ariba. Speaking of theme songs, do you have a preferred theme songs between the seasons? I see it switched up a little bit from the first season. Yeah, it got a little more rock and rollish. <laughs> right. It, like, it got a little pop. It got some drums yeah, under it. As opposed to just the mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm I'm very much of the mindset of like I fell off of power, but but I'm very much of the mindset of power. Like, give me the original theme song. And just like they cussed out 50 Cent when he switched from Joe singing, this is a biggerish town, to Trey songs. And we was like, turn that <laughs> off, put Joe back. Ooh, and everyone got what mad. A joy. Everyone got yeah. mad. And, and 50 switched it back to Joe. As he should have. Good job, 50. One, the one good thing right, you do. Right, because you are a troll. But like, a troll. we hopped on his ass on the internet and we're like, how dare you take our beloved Joe off of this? Like, put yeah. Joe back on. <laughs> For Trey songs at that, don't piss me off. Like, right. come on, 50. Yeah. You know we don't need to do. yeah, the assaulter. <laughs> we're good. Uh, no, uh, no, we don't need him. We don't need him to yodel. He can keep the no, yodel at home. Yodeling ass, weird ass. We we good. We really don't. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Keep it. Okay, so you like the original theme song. Yeah. I wasn't I mad at the other one, one, but... Okay, yeah. I watched it for the first time again this morning, and there was something so nostalgic about that original theme song, even though I had never seen it. I was like, wow, I feel at ease listening to this. This is great. And then I got to the second season, I was like, oh, uh, what? Did, why did they do this? Why is it probably right. like this? I don't like it. And then in the later seasons, they tried to do like a little mix mm-hmm. of the two. It had like a little twang to it, a little bit more twang, but it still had the snares and the 808s under it. Yeah. Like, it feels like people wrote strongly written it. letters. It feels like some two I'm whom it may concerns had hit WB and they were like, Absolutely. Y'all went too far. Step too far. <laughs> Reba is from Texas. Why doesn't the theme song sound like she's from Texas? Mm-hmm. What have you guys done? I already know. There were strongly worded letters right. being written, certainly. And I'm from Texas. So we know what Reba supposed to sound like. We know what Reba's supposed to sound like. I have yeah. one additional theory. Reba is the original redheaded baddie. Mm-hmm. She looks cute. I like the red hair. Do you think Red Rihanna is one of Reba's sons? Oh, okay. At one point, they did both have that flip up cut. They, they did. They did. Yes. yes. So I think maybe there was a stylist who was like, Rihanna, okay, walk with me. Walk with me. I'll tell Do you, you know about a single mom who works too hard and loves her kids and never stops and has a gentle hand Do and a heart of a fighter? She's a survivor. She's also a tastemaker. Okay? So a trendsetter, a trendsetter, if you will, walk with me. And then Remy was like, mm-hmm. "Yes." And I also have a thing for redheads. Um, 
Me too. I I work with Conan and I told Conan this. Um, well, I don't work with Conan. I just am at his company. But like, I had him on my podcast and I told him because he's a redhead. I was like, I used to be so obsessed with redheads. Like, I would like have like I would like see people like in Pittsburgh when I was in college and like if they had red hair, I'd like take a picture of them. And one of my friends was like going through my phone looking for like a photo or something, and was like, "Why do you have all these pictures of these redhead people in here that are just like the back of their head or something?" <laughs> You look like a murderer, and I was like, "No, I just think they're really fucking greedy." <laughs> ah, that is very fucking greedy. I know now. I, mean, I don't do it anymore. But uh, she was like, "We have to stop this." I was like, "It's just a little click." Like, I think they're so pretty. <laughs> I just want to know. If I was like, white, I would be a redhead. On... I don't want to be white. I love being black. Okay. But if I was, I think I'd be a redhead. <laughs> you would be redhead. Were you planning on trying red hair? Is that why you were keeping the pictures? You were like, oh, maybe I'll try this shade of red or I'll do this. No, that wasn't. I was never amazing. planning to try red hair, no, but I do love that that's you're funny. trying to rationalize this into normal thinking. There, It's not there, you know though. What? And that's okay. I was trying to do something. Right. Okay. You were like, mm-hmm. oh, you were trying to test out colors like Claire, like Clairol. That's why you did it. Exactly. Naturally, right. Right. Right, no. See if anything's gonna work. No. Mm-mm. And like, and mm-hmm. we even got that good red hair. Like, okay, so Rihanna did red, but it was like, Kool Aid, you know, when the girls used to dye yes, their hair with Kool Aid, it was red, red. It was red, red. Yes. But we even got that red hair that, like, I don't know, if she's actually a natural red hair, but whoever her colorist is, like, it don't matter. She is. Maybe she's born with it. But like, it's that <laughs> orangey, brassy red that is just so good. I I love it. It is a very good red, <laughs> like a nice. It it, it gives Clairol. Like I'm like, yeah, this is like a very good. Mm. Mm-hmm. it don't seem like a natural red but she i've never seen her with any other hair color yeah. in every image is that red hair so i'm like that has, well as that someone who's seen color. a lot of redheads and taking a lot of photos of mm-hmm. them without them knowing right it's it's, it's a good deep That's red it's, it's it's giving it's deep reality right? realness okay it's giving reality okay who knew okay <laughs> back to the show though do you have a favorite episode or storyline i remember really liking the episode where Cheyenne comes home and like tells Reba that she's pregnant Mm -hmm. and like how Reba deals with that and how Brock Mm -hmm. deals with it and the funny stepmom who I can't remember her name but like all of them dealing with this thing of like now another person's moving into the house and it I it wasn't like shamey which I thought was very progressive for the time but it was kind of like what are we gonna do now and like I guess I like that because like there's certain certain moments where like Reba and the new wife like have like connections and I always thought that that was great because I'm like oh look at Reba such a good lady she's this annoying lady who will not stop coming to her house who is fucking her ex like she just sometimes they still have these moments where they're like lovely uh so I don't know I just and then it actually happened in my real life like I was I'm an oops baby um uh I was my mom was in college when she had me Hmm. And, um, or like maybe just getting out of college, she's 21. But like, so my mom and my dad were never together. But like, my stepdad has mm-hmm. been in my life since I was a child. So I also consider him a father. But my father is great, mm-hmm. uh, my biological one as well. But like, recently, we had a Thanksgiving and I wanted to see everyone, but knew I didn't have enough time to get everywhere. So my dad was like, my biological father was like, oh, we just finished Thanksgiving here. And I was like, oh, just pull up to the house. So they pulled up to the house. We all eat sweet potato pie, and my mom can cook, so it was a bust down. So they showed up, and they they was eating everything too. Texas, right? Texas. Yeah. But so yeah. I was like, damn, like look at my blended family. Like it's just like Reba, like everybody <laughs> on here in our house. I love it. That is very cute. Yes, that is. I'm very like you cute. go, mom. I'm you're Reba. What else she was cooking? You had oh, some sweet listen. potato pie. So there's always sweet potato pie, pecan pie. They're all from scratch. Mm-hmm. And my mom has a little secret recipe that I know, but I cannot share. Um, you know, we got the Oof. baked mac and cheese. You know, we got some collard greens. Mm-hmm. We got them neck bones. Mm-hmm. Okay. And some of the neck mm-hmm. bones is in the collard important. greens. Okay. Turkey necks. Them turkey necks. Now, Lacey, I have an important question because this is something that I've talked about repeatedly on this podcast and people have shamed me for it in my real life and I won't have it. Okay. I've had enough. <laughs> I feel like I'm about to get shamed for it. I can feel it right now because you didn't mention it. No, wait. Are I was a chitterling dumb. eating. Are you a chitterling eating? Mm. No. Mm-hmm. The gas said enough. The gas said enough. Listen, no, Sequoia, you do know that we're free, right? <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something. 
like something. Listen. You're not about to free shame me two days after Juneteenth, okay? I'm going to have it. And from Texas, I, I found out later than everybody that we was free. That's the whole holiday of right. Juneteenth. And people who aren't black don't understand the nuance of that because there are black people who are like, yeah, we love Juneteenth and we're going to eat watermelon and have chicken. And people think watermelon is like a negative thing. But the reason that watermelon has that like coon or whatever like stereotype is because black people were sharecroppers and they were selling watermelon and they were making a lot of money from watermelon. And then white people, like they did with woke, like they do with anything that we have, they bastardized it and made it something negative because they were like, look at them niggas over there making all that money with a damn watermelon. We got to hurt them somehow. That's literally what it is. Yep. But I will say, even though I eat your watermelon on June 2, babes, we've been free for a little bit. There was this thing called the Emancipation Proclamation. <laughs> and like, yeah, we had Jim Crow. We had a lot of things. We're still fighting to this day. But when they did that, babes, when they did that, you didn't. You don't got to eat the chitterlets no more. <laughs> You don't have to. I don't think Reba would approve. I don't think Reba would approve this, this type of shaming. I don't think this is her spirit and her likeness. I don't. Think I know so. Harriet Tubman this is, is gone, right. but sis, walk with me. Let's follow the drinking gourd. The North Star's over this here. This is not right. I'm gonna follow the chitlins. I'm gonna take That's you. what I'm gonna follow. I'm gonna take you on the underground subway. Okay, I'm gonna take you <laughs> on the railroad. Okay, and we're gonna go to freedom. I can't believe. That black people don't eat chitlins no more. Look at this. This is crazy. One, it's what have we become? Because it's it, okay. I know it became a delicacy, but it was you know it came from scraps and it was getting from massa. I know, what and it you, is. Know, I you know, you know that even if we do deign to eat them, people don't be clean and they chitlins well enough. And they what you gonna be eating? Boom? Mine be clean. My mom clean mine. I trust my mama. They be clean. Oh, she in there rubbing okay. it with limes and lemons. She be in there rubbing it. You know, black people not supposed to, not supposed to cook down. our chicken. I just want to say it to black people: we're not supposed to clean our chicken. Okay, I just want everyone to know that clean our chicken. I know. I know we like to. You could never tell my mom that. Soap it she up. don't believe. She not. I didn't told her several it's times. Salmonella she doesn't care. everywhere, y'all. It's gonna cook out. It's science. She said that's because other people dirty and they don't know how to clean their damn sink after. She don't care well, you know, what I'm talking everything about. Everything roots back to racism. It's the reason why most black people like their steaks well done. Is because. Back in the Jim Crow South, if you went to a butcher and you were black, they would give you like older meat or like sketchier meat. So you had to cook it all the way through mm. to make sure that Ooh, you didn't, didn't that get one. sick. So that's why it mm. became like customary. It's a reason that God, black so people like butter me. pecan ice cream. There was a time. I yeah, saw I saw that. And I was like, damn, everything racism. I mean, we knew tipping was racism. Everything that's literally from Jim Crow South. Right. They didn't want to pay black people to work. So they were like, oh, you can work here, but people have to tip you for you to have any wage. And then they just kept it. Right. They were like, everyone could be slaves with tips. We'll just keep it. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, let's keep slavery. We like it. Yeah, we'll just make them tip. Do, do what they need to do. So you're telling me that every black delicacy has a legitimate root uh, and slavery that makes it acceptable today, except for my chitterlings. That one didn't have girl. It wasn't good enough. It's boo boo in there. You know it is. Not if you wash it out, Lacey. Not if you wash it out. Okay, but the, the, who? <laughs> listen, I know people out there eat ass. They, you know, like to eat human ass. They like to look on the booty hole. Maybe. But that's essentially what you just you're eating pig booty. Pig, pig and cousin's booty. Come on now. Have you ever seen a pig and been like, I would love to eat that pig's ass? No. I be eating other stuff off the pig. Yes. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. I'm going to leave it at that. So you're not eating no chillings. I just want to know. I just no, want to know what's I'm going not. on. And I found out. But, but it's okay. You, you know, know what? what? You just, anticipated it. That's though. it. You knew where I was going to be. I did. As soon as I saw the <laughs> sign, I said, mm, have I, I been know. around them? Yeah, yes. Have I orbited a chitlin? Absolutely. Have you, I've seen them cooked. Have, I have you ever put one in your mouth? No. <laughs> no. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. We're going to move on. No we're, judgment we're if you want to eat chitlins, y'all. Okay. No, I'm I've judged. No, it's too late. I've I'm already snails. judged. Everybody. I've eaten escargots. So, you know, I'm like, it's, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've, Thank you. I've eaten frog legs. In solidarity. Frog legs. I do. Alligator. I've eaten all of those things as well. I ain't, mm-hmm. ain't no possum, but people well. in my family do like to catch it and cook it up. So, having, having I'm not a possum. I ain't no possum, either. but people do, you know. I'm not above it though. I would <laughs> I, I would try a possum. Anyway. Favorite cast member? Is of it Reba? It is. And and I was Of course. Yeah. Naturally. I would say a second is Cheyenne. I thought that she was so 
fun. And I know her character was ditzy, but I think that it takes a smart person to play a ditzy person. And she just would hit those jokes Definitely. in a way that I just, I loved Cheyenne. She was like such a ray of sunshine. Um, if, mm, if I was to pick my personality, I feel like I'm a Cheyenne. I, I don't think I am a Reba, but I love Reba. Like, yeah, okay. I'm not I'm not a single yeah. mom who works too hard. You know, I work too hard. But no. I'm not a single mom and nobody's in my house. Mm. There was a quote from Whoopi Goldberg mm. that really resonated with me. They were like, Whoopi, when are you going to get married? And she was like, I don't think I want anybody living in my house. And I was like, ooh, Whoopi. Hmm. You know, that's real. I think I my mom be saying the same thing. She be like, uh-uh. Every time she spent too much time with a man, she's like, no, 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 they can't live here. I don't like it. Man or woman, least woman favorite quick. character. <laughs> Very much that. Least favorite character from the show. Least favorite char- Brock, her husband. Of he is trash. Of course, right. And you know what's so trash about it is that he still wins. Like the patriarchy still wins. Hmm. He's not with Reba no more. They divorce. Yet he always all up in her house. He bringing his new wife in her house, having you Reba give his wife advice, like all in a business all the time. And so it's basically like he just he gets the best of both worlds all the time. And I it's hate wild. it. He doesn't deserve it. Like not only is she his new wife, she is his mistress. Mm-hmm. That it's younger. He left Reba mm-hmm. to be with younger mistress what in what world do you get to have your mistress in my house chatting it up with me getting advice and, and, and you get and me and you chummy we're not we're not friends we're not chummy that's, that's and we're how. supposed to just act like that's fine like we're like reba's the bigger woman now and she's bringing the family together it's like no that's not her responsibility get out of reba's house everyone right now Mm-mm. single file get, get out. out of reba's house she says she's 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 a single mom that worked too hard she's tired and here y'all niggas are all over her stuff in the way move get out surviving y'all like she's surviving y'all she's i'm a survivor of y'all she's a hundred percent y'all putting her through through y'all are the problem and also like and that's something else lucky and has one woman in his life that you know and he ain't shit okay wayne did you see that the the polygamy black polygamy tiktok there's like a whole black polygamy tiktok area and there's a there was I saw just recently a viral video of this man who has three gorgeous black women who are they're all in a relationship together, and I was like these women are amazing. Like some of them have kids from previous relationships. They all like kind of like help parent and have a community, and I think that's really beautiful. The only issue is the damn man because they were sitting on the couch uh-huh. with the the first the first girlfriend. And he's like, you know, she's like, you know, you have to be really secure to be in a polygamous relationship. I'm like, you go off, girl. You tell him how you're so secure. I appreciate it. Anyway, so then he's like, like yeah, you know, I knew that one woman wasn't enough for me. Like, you know, some women could cook and clean. Some women, they got their finances together. Other women got da 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 And I was looking at this bum. He ain't even sexy or nothing. Bum. And I they know. built. They stack. They fine. And I'm like, of course. how? And he hadn't even got enough house. To have that many beautiful women in it. And that's Brock. Brock, Brock yeah. over here having his cake and eating it too. Absolutely. And any relationship that involves a man, isn't the man always the problem? That's what I feel. If the relationship does involve one, if there's a problem, it's that nigga. I'm certain. It's where we looking first. I'm mm-hmm. sorry. We got, to, we got to look there first. Take a gander. Now, we might be wrong. It might be the woman. Or in, if you're in a male and male relationship, it's, it's definitely one of y'all. But like, it's, you know, <laughs> y'all then absolutely, it's definitely one of y'all. If yeah. you're gay, it's yeah. definitely one of y'all, Sorry. right? But like, if it's a man and a woman, it's usually the man. We can just like, it's like how the cops like they don't do their job. But when a, a domestic situation happens, or, or not even domestic situation, but if like a woman goes missing and she's married, the first person they're looking at is the husband. Oh, definitely, is is very much that. It's that same energy. And that's Brock. Brock is definitely the problem, the center of the issue. Why would you move next door with your new Next mist- door. Like, don't piss me off, Brock. This is not funny. And the kids, like, most of them You wouldn't need to move next door. That's weird. That's weirdo behavior. What, what are you talking about? You want to move in with your dad. He lives right there. He lives here, pretty much. What are you talking about? For what? Bro. He wanted sister wives so bad. He did. He, really he almost had it too. And I'm sick about it. Yeah. Didn't appreciate did. that. 
Mm -mm. At all. That was the problem I had. Reba was just a little too friendly with that ex-husband and that new wife Mm -hmm. slash mistress for my personal taste. Could you ever be friends with the cheating ex and their 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 mistress, their uh their person that they cheated on you with? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, isn't that crazy? (laughs) I was just not expecting. I feel like I asked you a leading question. Like you how did. lawyers be asking leading <laughs> questions, you know? Like on the and night like, of the 15th. <laughs> right, you know? And and they get the answer that they're looking for. You said, absolutely. I was waiting for the not. I was like, absolutely. You were like, did it solve? Did, 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 okay. did, okay. did it freeze? You were like, right. did, you were it, like did it? Yeah. Absolutely. Lacey, did absolutely. I lose you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you said absolutely. You said what you said. Okay. Yes. And I respect it. Because like, I respect that. In my opinion, I don't know. If you don't, I've had like situationships. I've dated people and it didn't work out. But if we're both good people and we just know it doesn't sing, they become my friends because that's essentially what we were doing. It was just like friends and like, let's mm-hmm. touch each other a little bit, you know? Mm-hmm. So like, if we remain yeah. friends, we'll be like, we're not touching no more. Like I can be friends with you. So yeah. not now in Brock situation, I don't know. Okay, so a mistress, I I get it. It would take me some time. It would have to be like yeah. I would have to be tied to them in a way where like where Reba and Brock had kids. And you also yeah. you would have to like apologize and like show remorse and change your behavior and treat me kindly. And then I'll forgive you. Like forgiveness is like literally my weapon because I'm not holding on to your shit. Like look, bro, I'm Aww. not gonna die holding on to that. Like I'll let you How cancer esque of you. That is that is very Mm-hmm. We all make mistakes. Now, if we have no ties, if we have no children, okay. If I'm not a single mom who works too hard, oh, babe, you'll never see me again. Mm-hmm. You'll ne- never yep. see me again. No, like. <laughs> but if we had some ties, I could. I think I could make nice. I think Reba made a little too nice because I'm like, why is everybody in your she house? Did. Why is everybody All living here, Reba? Reba? All these people come in unannounced, like they got keys, like they pay rent here. Why are they here like that? You don't never see nobody really knocking on the door in Reba. Like they just they ain't seen nobody rat a tat tat ever on a door or nothing. I don't quite understand. It's a it's a mistress, new mo- new stepmom. Is her name Becky or did I make that up? <laughs> Becky was good hair. You, okay, you might definitely be like, I can't remember what her name is. That was the one I thought I, I remember her name was. But um, it, it must start with a B. Beatrice, Becky, I don't know. Anyway, maybe, maybe I can't remember what it is, and I know people are gonna scream at the video like, "We know the name." I know. Like they, now, they, I want to like look it up to be like, yeah. I don't want people to be mad because I this is something <laughs> I hate in podcasts is when they'll be like, "Who was that person?" And we're like, "Oh, never mind, like, moving on." Like, and then I'm like, "No, get it, no, say it, I didn't answer." <laughs> Yeah, of course. Now my Wi-Fi will be flaking. My so. Wi-Fi is flaking too, so I'm so sorry. Y'all gonna have to have edging. You're gonna edge. I'm so no, sorry. No, we're just right. We're edging you. You could drop it in the comments, and I'll respond. Right. With, like most sincere apologies because yell at us in the comments. So sorry. No, yeah, that's my bad. But okay. I love on September, on September 23rd, 2021, esteemed drag queen Shea Coule tweeted, "Black people." Was the Reba show a guilty pleasure of ours? Because I'm finding a lot more of us watched it than I thought we did. And said tweet received 1,170 likes. Mm-hmm. Do you have any theories as to why Black people in particular felt Reba the way that we did and do? Well, first of all, I love Shea Coulee. I mean, mm-hmm. it's like so sweet. Um, it's on my podcast. Listen to this game, guys. You can listen to Shea Coulee. Those cheekbones, Ooh. they don't quit. They work so hard. Um, <laughs> but Shay's right that we have this connection. I think one from something that you said earlier that helped me even more connect to it. It was on Warner Brothers at a time yeah. where the WB was like, if the cops are coming, Warner Brothers. It was our network. The W and the CW. Was that the same thing? Did the no. WB become the CW? No, but it, the last season of Reba was on the CW. Oh, okay, that's what. Yeah, that's what you're saying. But like the WB, like. Mm-hmm. Wasn't that like the, the oh you know Deja Plot? You know it might have merged. I think that's what it is. Yeah, it might have merged. Yeah, but yeah. but Deja Plot, who his turf shit, he's becoming old man shakes fist at cloud. But I but when he was in his prime, I loved his comedy, and he had a joke about the frog being like, of course this network has this damn frog. Like, I'm the it was like a black. Oh. It was black 
cute. And like, yes, and so now when I see Warner was. Brothers, I think like, like hey, he was like, hey, niggers. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> um, <laughs> like it was very black. Was a, so we went over there and we watched our black television shows and then they slipped Reba in and we were like, oh yeah, we, we like Reba too. Like, um, yep. so like we love Reba, right? And I think we have this kind of kindred connection to her, like, motherhood and, like, her, like, countryness and, you know, brass tacks, yeah. comedy. And we have taste. Why do we have taste? But also, that. I think it's the Steve Irwin of it all. Oh, yeah. Steve Irwin is someone I always, because, always want to talk about on this podcast as well. So Because black people are always like, look, it's on site for Stingrays. It's on site. Yes. And we're not joking. Like, it's not a joke about no, his no. death. Like, we, I think we all somehow watched this show that was, like, comforting about this nice white man who liked animals. I think it's also a little theory that I'm having, too, now coming to me is that maybe Black people loved it so much because we were like, we want white people to be kind and nice. And yes. we want white people to not be racist. And we... We support mm. white people. Hell, if you can fucking do a two step, niggas gonna exalt you to Ellen fame. Like I we, swear. and I, we need to stop doing that. And also, like the cookout invitations are closed. So if you're inviting anybody, Ex- you don't have a you don't have a plus off. one. Like please Mm-mm. stop. Please no stop. plus ones. We've stopped. Yeah. The root. I'm looking at you. Like please stop. Like I saw that. Yeah, list. and yeah. I was like, this is embarrassing. Are you not embarrassed? Like it wasn't even a good list. But anyway, no, so. not at all. Mm-hmm. But it's Mm-mm. like, I think we all, like, as Black people, and I know it's like a wide swath to say this, I think some of us will align ourselves with white supremacy for safety because we're like, this is the only life I get, so I might as well get as much out of it as I can. And then a lot of us fight against white supremacy because we're like, things could be better tomorrow. And yeah. Sequoia won't eat chitlins anymore because the change going to come. And- <laughs> I'm not willing to fight that hard. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> Like, we was born by the river in a little tent, but we're not at the river no more, Sequoia. Like, we're not at the river. I was born by the river. I was shaking that ass. <laughs> <laughs> Been it over, Papa Pussy. I was making a cash. <laughs> Very much. Very wrong. But I think it is a little bit of that, too. It's like, oh, there's this nice white lady. And then I'm having the episodes where it's like, I, I uh, called the cops on a black person. It's like, the, it's yeah. wholesome. So I think yes. there's a little bit of that too. And you know, we love Steve Irwin and we like, that's a ten toe situation. Anytime I see the Irwin kids tweet anything, especially if it's about their dad, I'll go to the comments and it's literally just black people like, We love you so much. I, you, you look so well. Like your dad would be so proud. Yeah. Like we're in them comments yeah. heavy, like the Concord Nine Hundred was our guy. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And we was like, girl, Steve. don't play don't play Do about Steve or his children, okay? Mm-hmm. Cause we we checking for them. We gonna make sure they good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, and Reba is also our girl. Yes. I feel like black people in general. This is generalization, obviously not all black people, of course, per usual. Um, like a more mouthy woman on television, mm-hmm. and I feel like at the time, a lot of the white women who were on television were a little bit less. Then you know, Reba right. was. It was all like way too hot wife for who she married. That was the exactly, sitcom trope. Very much that. Very much that. Like yeah. this doesn't make any sense. And now she's sitting here like she not she's not pressing him enough. She's not snappy enough at him for our personal taste. But Reba mm. was definitely giving it. Somebody else who was definitely giving it is Roseanne. Mm. That television show. She was also. Before she, she got on that ambient, another, I guess, another did racism. <laughs> and then she spoke. We got us right. Out and we we're like, don't talk. That she was racist. And- like, why would you call a black lady a monkey? Why would you call Valerie Jarrett a monkey? What is wrong with you? Anyways, that's neither here nor there. Ambiences. <laughs> Just embarrassing, you know? But we're like, don't talk. Like, we, we're like, we love you. Don't talk. And Every time they talk, we are like, oh, you're racist. Okay, well, we knew Why that. Ruining for me. We we had like, a good guess, but don't. I confirm. knew. I'm not dumb. Why would you have to confirm it? Like, be quiet. Let us all enjoy something without having to feel like you know, now we can't. But you're right. It's like we do like mouthier women. Not even mouthier. Mm-hmm. Just like not a woman who's subjugated by a man because. Mm. There is so much matriarchy in the black community 
And yes. I know a lot of people resent it because they're thinking like, oh, a single parent household or oh, the black mom is just raising the kids by themselves. And I always encourage people, like men, to realize like, who stayed? Who yeah. stayed? Well, and you well. calling us mouthy and you mad at us and you hate women, but who the fuck stayed? And you, you mad that. thinking that your mama needs to make your daddy stay, but like, let's, can we just talk about who actually stayed? Who oh stayed? Because I, I could have dropped you off at the nothing. fire station, babe. I could have dropped <laughs> you off at the general hospital and skirt, 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 like <laughs> bit the corners. Okay, bit so. the corners. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You mad because she yelling at you about cleaning your room again inside before the street lights go on. And that's not to say every parent is good or not abusive, but it's like, come on, at some point we gotta start looking at who stayed. And and and, and it right. is the mouthy black woman. And like it's not mouthy, Often. like it's mm-hmm. just speaking up for yourself. <laughs> right. I really like what you said about black, uh the black familial unit in general being kind of matriarchal. Mm-hmm. And I didn't grow up with a single mother, but I definitely grew up in a matriarchy. Like, yeah. nevertheless, my mom was, she wasn't even the breadwinner. My dad was the breadwinner, but she was, it, it was a matriarchy. Oh, That's no, you what give the energy of you grew up in a matriarchy. And so Thank do you. I. So I love that. Energy. Thank you. It's my favorite. Very much that. And I'm like, Reba definitely gives that matriarchal energy. The Roseanne show also gave that, even though Dan mm-hmm. was present and Roseanne, it's just a certain energy that I feel like black people enjoy when watching the television. It feels familial. It feels like we we can recognize that we're like yeah you know what it also Mm -hmm. is is that black people like when you get to the point like like when you're blunt like not like you know that's what i'm saying and like there is Mm -hmm. a huge thing in white culture where you have to do this subtle thing of like telling people things without actually just clearly telling them hinting at it being passive aggressive per my last email energy and it's like hate it Black people were like, we would much rather, we do it in white spaces because we know that they will reta- they'll get retaliatory if we are direct. Because then they're like, you're being aggressive. Oh my God, he hit me. Hello, police. Like, but, <laughs> right. but like, we don't want to say per my last email. We want to say, I mm. already said this. Right. And Reba was saying, I already said this. It's really simple. And then it's you don't really have to do the mental gymnastics of trying to mm. say something in a way that feels subversive enough that you're not hurting someone's feelings because they are too sensitive to just take right. facts as they are. <laughs> this is a fact. If your feelings are hurt behind the facts, that's that doesn't sound like a me problem. I'm not cussing you out. I'm not being rude. Hey. I'm not being racist. I'm not being aggressive. I'm simply stating what happened. And you want me to go the passive aggressive route. And I simply won't. That has gotten me in trouble in every job that I've had. And I have had retaliation happen. For that reason, I don't have time. And that probably why that probably is why Reba appeals yes. more to a black audience. Cause it's like, yeah, no, this is direct. This is bluntness versus I literally was reading a, st- a study that talks about how in the workplace, white people do have a certain communication style, mm-hmm. just in general. White people have a certain communication style. They prefer what was it? It was like they prefer peace to truth. Whereas black people prefer truth to peace. I'm I'm never going to omit the truth in no. order to keep the peace here. That sounds like an absence of justice to me. Anyways, we get into Oh that. no. I mean, listen, but, sometimes you gotta wake it up and you just woke it up. You know, and I'm with you. you know, but I think that's why we were like, Reba, like she feels like a little bit one of us. Like she's she's over here actually speaking the truth and not necessarily worried about keeping the peace. And like I, I love to keep peace. I'm a, I'm a cancer baby. Like I I want everybody to be happy, but at the same time, like it gets so exhausting trying to put everything that you think through a filter when you can just say what you think in a kind way that is like collaborative and accepting and, and nice. But no, you have to do that shit. And I'm the same way as you. Like I got like I got retaliated on a few times, like at jobs that yeah. I didn't want to be at. Thank God that I've been on right. my quitting mentality. Like I'm like, oh, but I'll leave. Get somebody else to do it. Do my brows. Like I'm leaving. Right. Like, <laughs> my my grandpa's 80th birthday party. I was working at a, a restaurant in West Hollywood, waiting tables, a sushi restaurant. That's why I know how to say check please in Japanese. Oh, why so aganishimas? And hey, <laughs> but like absolutely. I, they were, I was supposed to be part-time. They started scheduling me more, scheduling me more, scheduling me more. 
And then I was like, oh, well, my grandpa's 80 is coming up. I need to go to this. And they were like, well, you, you, you said that you had to leave for a family emergency like three months ago. And, and I said, if they wouldn't let me off, I was like, I have to quit if you're not going to let me have the day off because I'm going regardless. So this time they were like, right. well, we're not taking that. You have to quit step this time. Like you, they're and I was like, all right, bye. And I literally got okay. up and left. They were so mad. They were like, oh my yeah. God, this bitch really did what she said she was going to do. Like, bitch, we not. Mm-mm. I'm telling you the truth. I'm not giving you threats. These are promises. A hundred percent. There feels like this air of like, mm, this little black girl doesn't have the means to actually quit this job mm. with no other backup. So like, let's pull this card and see if she really does it. Fuck around and find out if you want to. If you want to. Fuck around to. and find out if you would like to. Yeah. So many people in my life, and maybe because we both have mat- matriarchal energy, but like, they're like astonished by my confidence. They're like, why do you feel like you deserve Same. things? Like, hey, yeah. make yourself smaller. Why, why you, you just think you deserve things? And I'm like, my guy, like, I deserve everything you have and more. I've had people tell everything me that I get that paid more, more than them. And I was like, babe, I, even if you mow the lawn, I should get paid more than you. Like, let's be so and what about it? Right. For real. <laughs> what about it? Was I supposed to like, like, what, what you want me to do that information? You want me to be like, oh my god, how dare they not be paying you more than a negress? How dare they like, not? Right. Right. What is wrong with people? People be I saying just... anything to me. I got a kind of face, I guess, that just people would just say any and everything to me. And I'm like, you, you <laughs> didn't hear what you said? You shouldn't you say that. Out out your right. You, you should put that That's in your crazy. I don't have that kind of face at all. People don't be saying you don't not not any people don't people i don't have that kind of listen place. i'll say y'all but, weren't here but i was late to this podcast because my internet wasn't working and i was leaving the writer strike and a bunch of bullshit and i got on the damn phone and i was like oh my god i'm so sorry please. like please forgive me like i don't want to waste your time like i love you so much like please i thought like, it was like she was gonna slap me through the phone i was like i'm, no. I'm so sorry please. No. you do not have a face people think i'm so much like, meaner so, than i am i'm you're not, not mean it but wasn't the, mean it just gives you all the face of somebody that you respect. I do <laughs> I don't have know. a face. I do have a face. <laughs> it's like, you don't play. No, you I don't play that. about Sequoia. Like, oh it God. insulates me from a lot of the bullshit, but I still be hearing it. Somebody told somebody else something. I'm like, huh, that's crazy that you... Is it because I'm a negress? That really is what I be feeling. Like, I be like, huh, this is because I'm a negress. I, I see. Mm. And it's like, damn, mm-hmm. that's bleak. But that's why I love mm. Rip, Rip was out here like, and, and also Rip is a woman, and so there is that like womanhood aspect to it as well. And you know, white women yeah. be trying to sneak in on feminism. They don't. They be leaving us out. Like y'all, stop leaving y'all spot voted stickers on Susan B. Susan B. Anthony's grave. She was a racist. Let that shit go. Um, oh my god. <laughs> like, <sighs> Like, also, white women, please remember that the biggest beneficiary of affirmative action is you. White so, women. Let's be no. so serious and for real and stop. Like, whoever that Asian dude was was like, oh, I didn't get into UC Berkeley because the 2% of black people were there, not the 43% of white people were there or the legacy students. Right. It's like, as right. soon as somebody has something that they want, they always look into black people because they're like, you, you They're like, one. you guys don't deserve it. Right, you're undeserving. I'm way more deserving than you because you are black and I am not. So why do you have it and I don't have it? Yep, that's how I figured Maybe out. because I'm better than you. Right, and I had to be. Simple. But also, then I had to be. I had to be a lot better than you too, not just a little bit. To even get half of what you got. Like, let's be so serious. Uh-huh. I realized I go into white spaces sometimes and like really which white spaces sometimes or like something more basic like first class on an airplane, right? And people white people will always kind of find a way to ask me what i do for a living and i was like yes. what is i just like started thinking about it really deeply like, what's this about and i was like oh my god i get it it's like we actively try not to give you niggas money how did you get money right are you an athlete working for an owner who's making more money off your back are you a right. singer working for a studio or are you, you know, have like, an overseer yeah who's your overseer right. because how did you right. get money and then how did you get in here because we need to make sure we stop that <laughs> we- how did you get in here <laughs> we're stressed we have to stop that we have to cut that out we're yeah, stressed no, we've had enough of what you. are you doing <laughs> how did you get here <laughs> Very much. You're supposed to be here. Like <laughs> nobody like you was supposed to be here. Get out. <laughs> hmm hmm They do like that. Do you remember Abigail Fisher? Like years ago when she was upset that she didn't get into like 
some very basic texas school yes okay i will say ut is not basic i'm from texas sorry sorry and... my bad i forgot you're from texas also listeners you know i don't know nothing about texas my bad there's like top 10 percent i i got automatic acceptance into the university of texas you know didn't go because i got more money from somewhere else but Period. There were girls that were mad that I got in and they did it. It was like, it's a thing. But yeah, I remember her. She went, took it all the way, you know, through the courts and stuff. To the Supreme like, Court. Mm-mm. But they never thinking about all the other white girls who look just like you that got in and you didn't. That's, that's, that's the whole thing. Like this. Because they assume that they're supposed to be there, but you're not. You're taking something from them. Your blackness is taking something from them. But the white girls, they're supposed to be there, so... And you bring up Abby, like. that actually really puts a stain, because I'm pretty sure she was a redhead, and that really disappointed me. She was. That she... She was a redhead! I love redheads, and mm. it really disappointed me that she was a villain mm. like that, because mm. Reba works too hard mm. and loves her kids and never Reba stops. Too hard. For Abigail you to Fisher, act like that, on. Abigail. Tarnit. Okay? Wait. Before I forget, this is so off-topic. Have you heard that People with naturally red hair, anesthesia does not work on them. Yes, is this a conspiracy theory? No, Are you going to this out via TikTok. on me? No, I found this out via TikTok from redheads. Like they all like I saw video after video okay. of redheads being. But did like, you Google it after the, the TikTok? I did. Okay, it, okay. It, did. it doesn't like not 100 percent time but like often anesthesia does not work on people with natural red hair. And like they tell doctors this ahead of time. They're like I've been put to sleep for oral surgeries, for regular surgeries, whatever. I tell doctors ahead of time now. They're like, I'll wake up. Like a normal dose of anesthesia doesn't work. Like I will wake up. And they don't believe them. So they're like, yeah, I'm just having surgeries awake damn near. What? I'm like, oh my God. That blew my mind. I want to know what the fuck is going on with science. Someone explain it now. Science. I need to know. I mean, there's there's all types of things with our bodies. But I, if you're a redhead listening out there, one, I love you and I think you're beautiful. Uh, except for Abby and, and any other raggedy bitches out here doing things you shouldn't be doing. You know who you are. Raggedy You bitch. know yeah. who you are. But I will say, like, it's funny, like, what, so can I ask, like, gender identifying, were these redheads mostly female or? No, it was, I think it was mostly men, but oh, there was, like, okay. a mix. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's interesting to hear that it was, like, also men because, like, a lot of the medical malpractice happens with women where they just, like, don't want to wow. give you things. Talk about Ooh, it. Ooh, mm-hmm. I had to, like, I had three mm-hmm. fibroid procedures last year. Um, you did? Yeah. I have a fibroid. I just found out. Let me, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I, I, listen, hit me up after this because I have all the doctors mm-hmm. and all the information. Um, I had two embolizations where they cut off the blood supply to the fibroids, but then they were so large, yeah. they became necrotic. So one was like the size of a cantaloupe. Like, so I had to have them surgically removed. But mm. I remember one embolization, it was out. I just left. Like, after the procedure was done, I, my family member took me home, right? Then the next time I had it done after the major surgery, I was like, I should stay in the hospital because the pain is really, really bad. And so I stayed in the hospital so they could manage the pain. 3 a.m., my doctor got me on the schedule. This nurse going to come in. Well, it, it, I was like, are you here to give me my medicine? She was like, well, like, are you having any pain? Like, if you're not, they like, you don't really need it. Like, da 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 And I was like, on a schedule for a reason because if you get behind the pain that's what they call it like if the pain starts then if you take the medicine or whatever you're already behind so you're gonna be in pain for hours and so i was like my doctor told me how to do this he told me to do this and he gave you this information she was like well if you're not in pain then and i honestly think it's because they're like we have tried to kill you niggas for so long and you're still alive you must have more tolerance for pain than we do you dancing you doing edge designs Swoops? Right, you know what? You think it's thriving, alive? No. Yeah, new dance mm-hmm. every week. There's no way we feel pain the same way because we are inflicting mm-hmm. it on you. What are you doing? Right. Like, but right. I, right. I will say, like, guarantee anybody out there for the redheads and everyone, like, just threaten legal action, even if you're not rich. And here's the way to do it: you don't just say like, "I'll sue you" or da 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 something extra. It's not Dick Wolf. Doom doom law and order. No, you say. <laughs> gaslight him a little bit what's your name 
You know what? Never mind. I don't need it because the time that you clocked in to work today, I can easily have my lawyer figure out. So if you're going to deny me my pain care, then go ahead and put that in writing. And even if you don't, I will have record of this, that you denied me what I was supposed to have and that you're racist. I was like, you know, the mortality rate for black women in hospitals, especially during childbirth, is through the roof. And this is the treatment that we get from people like you who are assuming that we are drug addicts and we are not. So go ahead and write that down for me. And right, it, right yeah. after that, oh my God, ma'am, no, I'm not a racist. Like, I'm so sorry. I'm mm-hmm. Like, scammed you. Make sure you give me my fucking right. Now you're scammed and give me my pills. Right. Thanks. I got, it was IV. It wasn't even pills. But I'm like, sis, a drip. I got an entertainment lawyer. I don't got no lawyer that can sue you with. But guess what? I drive around <laughs> and find a bus bitch. Uh, I'll find a bus bitch right. in a fucking minute. Okay? I'm going to walk out the hospital Absolutely. with a neck brace to. on and be like, I got the, they, they gave me the neck like they did it to me in the hospital but then i got it they did it right i i received it in the hospital yeah i received i sustained this injury here (laughs) okay i keep a neck brace in my car don't play with me (laughs) (laughs) don't hit lacy in a car if you see lacy driving don't hit her in the car you hit me i'm immediately gonna have a neck brace on she popped the neck before the cops get there before we exchange insurance i got a neck Uh, brace and I'm gonna open the door. They'll be like, ma'am, did you go to the doctor? Did you like did you have time to go to the doctor no, between you now and you can like I'm gonna open the door just... with a cane, like slowly pushing it out. Right. <laughs> They're like, what? You like, no, did you this did to this. me. How dare you? I, really, I respect that. <laughs> I do respect that. But so yeah. red has a anesthesia. Get, get out there and pretend you got a lawyer. We can all pretend we got a lawyer. Like, who gonna know? Who gonna check you, boo? Reba. Right. If you need to know Reba. Take a page out of Reba's you book know. and get mouthy, mm-hmm. redheads, and say you mm-hmm. got a lawyer. Get mouthy, yeah. okay? And just tell me you got a lawyer. And do the what's your name part, because the what's your name part is fire, being like, what's your name, and then answering your own question and be like, you know what? I, I can see when you checked into the hospital for work today. I don't even need it. Like, that's oh the thing God, that gets them. Never mind. That's what gives them. That's em. so good. That is so good. Oh, I know they hard be palpitating. Yeah. I know they be scared. Cause that's like, what powers do you know? What what's going on that you like? Never mind. I don't even right. need the name. <laughs> You're like, oh, that didn't sound good. Let me clean this up right, right quick before I really get in trouble. Yeah, Lacey, thank you so much for coming on the show to talk to me about Reba, your fave, your redheaded fave. Please let me. folks know where they can find you on the internet, your podcast, any other projects you would like to chat about. Yes, if you want to find me on the internet, D I V A L A C I Diva Lacey on all platforms. If you want to listen to my podcast of silliness about scams, uh, Scam Goddess Podcast, and um, watch iCarly stream it. It's on Paramount Plus right now. It's coming out every week and. July 7th, The Outlaws comes out on Netflix, so get into that. And you can also stream the Will Tech show on uh, Peacock. So, like, I don't know. Do, consume one thing that I'm making, please. Jesus. Lacey be making, okay? <laughs> Creator for real. And per usual, you can find me at BPLP Pod across Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. You can email me at blackpeopleloveparamore at gmail.com with episode topic recommendations, hate mail, feedback, or anything else. Damn, this is the part where I say listen to my new podcast, Glass House by Square Homes, but y'all know that that has not been updated in months at this point. So uh, that's it. Okay, last thing I wanted to say was, I meant to tell you, what? I I crowd surfed for the first time at a Phoenix concert. I love Tame Impala. I love Phoenix. Wolfgang Amadeus is one of my favorite albums. I call it Three Bombs. But yeah, like I crowd surfed for the first time there, and it was very fun. Wow. I know that you have to have some Leo in your chart. That is, I yeah, do. You, you gotta have the fire all up and through your chart. What's your What's your big three? Also, oh, Le- oh, so I'm a Leo me. Venus. I am okay. a Libra rising. I am a Cancer mm-hmm. Sun, and I am an Aries Moon. <laughs> okay. okay, okay, nightmare fuel. Yeah. That sounds about right. <laughs> it sounds about. It sounds like a lot of energy. It sounds but- like a, a likable likable and a lot of energy that's what it sounds like <laughs> i just had to tell you that i just wanted to tell you that sagoya <laughs> but i was no, like, I excited to tell you that because i do love paramore and Haley. she's our queen i want to be like you what song what paramore song do you like oh she paramore also song? had paramore. that red hair for a while she did oh, she, she red. did red hair Haley. Yes. yes like a real red yeah a punchy red i mean yeah. this is gonna be so cliche but i gotta go I didn't mean to break, but you got where I want him now. Like, on, like it's, I gotta go there. I'm sorry. It's just so 
good. It's so good. Like, so, it but is. I love Haley. She's not vocals, vocals. And like, I like, like, she always talks about black women that she like listens to. And like, she's like, oh, I love Beyonce's like riffs. And blah, blah, blah. like, Haley's been a real one. Haley's been a real redhead like mm-hmm. Reba. Keeping her mouth shut. Uh-huh. Being like a redhead Reba. like Reba. Yep. Yep. Works That's it. I love that for her. Yeah. <laughs> I just want like, to derail the ending of this. I just wanted to tell you that. You don't no, even no. have to put it in. <laughs> no, you're good. That's, I mean, it's in. We, we're keeping it all at this point. That's it, y'all. We're leaving. Bye. <laughs>